In Dragon's Dogma 2, everything has a price. Fast travel, resting at the inn, slow moving cart rides, armor, upgrades, you name it. If you can do something or want something, you have to either pay for it, risk your life for it, or spend time searching for it. We often talk about balance in RPGs and action games. In Dragon's Dogma 2, the ideas of risk and reward apply to nearly every moment in the game. For some players, it's going to be too much. Fans of the original will rejoice, and anyone with the love of genuinely immersive fantasy should give it a chance. The original Dragon's Dogma was released in 2012, then re-released a year later as Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen. It was thoroughly misunderstood as a semi-busted Skyrim clone, or maybe a Dark Souls wannabe. It wasn't helped by a heaping helping of jank and bugs, and poorly explained mechanics. But in the years since, the game has steadily grown in popularity, respect, and appreciation. In retrospect, it did so many audacious new things that the initial reactions were understandable. Dragon's Dogma 2 is bigger, vastly more ambitious, incredible to look at most of the time, and every bit as uncompromising as the original. It will both delight some and dismay other action RPG fans that the sequel does very little hand-holding. The developer has made many changes to onboard players from the Elden Rings of the world. It's a game that many impatient gamers will bounce off of, but once the game starts to make sense, it hooks you deep. The narrative premise is pretty simple, at least at first. An immense dragon threatens the world, and only a hero called the Arisen, and chosen by the dragon itself, can defeat it. There can only be one true Arisen. But a pretender is sitting in power, and sends you to prison to keep you away. You escape and your main task is to take your place as the Arisen and fulfill your destiny. Dragon's Dogma 2's main quest starts simply enough, but naturally spins out into dozens of smaller overlapping branches, pushing the player ever farther across a map that's four times the size of the original. What's incredibly unique and often tension inducing is that many of the side quests have a timer, and will play out with or without the player's input. Take too long to rescue a lost child, and the child dies. It makes you think very carefully about the wisdom of taking on even the smallest optional assignment. But the temptation is there because you never know what or who you'll find along the way, if you survive. Survival in Dragon's Dogma 2 is not simply a matter of having enough health flask or having a healer wave a magic wand. For one thing, that altruistic mage can only ever partially heal you. Every battle bites off a little of your total health until you rest at a campfire or inn, which, by the way, cost either coin or hauling around the makings of a campfire. And of course hauling too many healing items quickly encumbers you to the point of exhaustion. Like all action RPGs, Dragon's Dogma 2 is a power fantasy with fighters, mages, archers, and thieves grouping together to fight. There are four beginning classes called vocations, and basic vocation splits into four other specialized subclasses. Opening the next class almost always involves completing quest. You essentially commit to a class from character creation on, but the secondary vocations allow for some class mixing and matching. Dragon's Dogma 2 is a single player adventure, mostly. The qualification comes from the fact that the player can hire pawns or NPC companions belonging to other players. Every player character has a main pawn and can hire two additional temporary pawns. The pawns are everywhere, marketing themselves out in the world and for hire in a sort of alternate dimension access through riftstones. The pawn mechanic is the original game's most innovative idea. In the sequel, the pawns have even more dynamic presence. They fight, quip, complain, and complement depending on their basic nature. Some are more autonomous than others. The player gifts them armor and weapons and chooses upgrades and abilities for their main pawn. Pawns can be easily managed in battle. 
Even without direction though, they perform consistently with their personality most of the time. Dragon's Dogma 2's sprawling world might just be the most dynamic, interesting, and challenging world ever crafted in a game. Between the pawns, players' wide range of weapons and skills, the smart use of the environment and the enemy AI, combat is the definition of emergent. It's frenetic, exacting, and rarely predictable. Enemies often attack in groups, and there are many Monster Hunter-like bosses that can be climbed. At night, in near total darkness, exploration is terrifying. Sure, you can light a fire to keep the darkness at bay, but then some monsters are drawn to your light. Visually, everything about Dragon's Dogma 2 is a massive upgrade from the first game, which is probably expected. The hundreds of characters and thousands of lines of dialogue hit more often than they miss, despite some conspicuously bad lip syncing. Spell effects and lightning in general are incredibly well realized. Combat animations are still less than perfectly fluid. There's always so much going on, it's hard to notice. And there are still a lot of bugs and weird lapses in AI behavior, like pawns that refuse orders. Or maybe that's intentional. Comparing Dragon's Dogma 2 to Elden Ring is both inevitable and instructive. They're both massive action open world RPGs, and their narratives are likewise fashioned from mystery and mythology, without regard to origin. But where Elden Ring is the logical evolution of From Software's two-pronged attention to both accessibility and difficulty, Dragon's Dogma 2 doesn't worry nearly as much about welcoming casual players. It plays by its own rules. It's almost impossible to play Elden Ring wrong. Just about every build or weapon can see the player through. On the other hand, not really understanding Dragon's Dogma's two systems and trying to play the game like Dark Souls will simply not work. From character creation on, Dragon's Dogma 2 has to be approached with a patience, understanding, and above all, ownership of choices. You get one save at a time. Just like the original game, Dragon's Dogma 2 demands that players meet it on its own terms. Trying to play it like other popular action RPGs will be frustrating, and probably not much fun. The barrier to entry is not just skill, but acceptance. For those players willing to set aside their notions of how an RPG has to work, the rewards are rich, singular, and utterly immersive in ways that have rarely been seen in the genre.